In this section, we are going to take a look at common performance monitoring tools. Tools for Java Batch Performance Monitoring, Performance Copilot, as well as Java bindings like Parfait, Drop Wizard Metrics, monitoring tools like Metrics or Health Check uh, of Eclipse Microprofile, the Prometheus tool that allows to share and also distribute monitoring data and alternatives like Graphite or Grafana. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to perform batch monitoring using the Spring Batch Performance Monitoring tool, how the tool works, and some things to keep in mind when using it, followed by a live demo. A batch job, whether it's Spring Batch or JBatch or other batch standards, is usually a black box and each step is processed without user interaction, usually at night or sometime when batches run ITD. But there could be situations where you want to have a look into this black box, for example, for bug fixing or performance optimization. Batch by design uh, doesn't allow to take a breakpoint or anything that you may know from traditional programs that run in real time with possible user interaction. And asserting something like that, for example, via annotations is of course possible. And there may be tools that do this in a similar way to, for example, GUnit, but inserting them to the actual live production batch code would be quite messy and have them in there all the time. So you cannot take them out by design. So that would be very complicated, especially if it had to be done for each individual batch. So that's why Spring Batch Performance Monitoring uses a slightly different approach. It uses the batch monitoring via aspect J or listeners that the Spring Batch framework provide. So there's no insertion of any monitoring aspects into the code because they are weaved in using aspect J. So the code is not changed. Adding a dependency and configuring that dependency via a Spring context uh, is all that you need. And that of course also makes it very easy using the right Spring profiles to monitor only at a particular stage. For example, you may want to monitor in pre-production, but then turn it off for production. Monitoring data is stored in a database schema. By default, the embedded uh, H2 database is used and that data can be processed and analyzed uh, with other tools of your choice. There are things to keep in mind, although they're not real issues. Uh, for once, performance monitoring, of course, always has a certain impact on the actual process being monitored. That's pretty similar with logging or other forms of profiling, for example. So it won't really slow it down tremendously. And you can turn on monitoring on an item by item basis. So you can control very easily what to monitor and what not. And you can also turn it off completely in certain situations or use spring profiles so that a particular build job uh, includes monitoring and other runs of that batch job do not. Since spring batch performance monitoring, as the name suggests, works only with spring batch, and uses other spring related mechanisms like aspect J. It won't work with any other implementation of the Java batch standard, even though if you use the spring batch implementation of that standard, of course it can also be monitored, but if you choose a different uh, JSR352 implementation, then it wouldn't work with that at the moment. So let's do some batch monitoring in this Example, 
we got an employee class, a reader, a processor, and a writer, all defined by the Spring Batch API. The only thing to integrate the monitoring, as mentioned, is this configurator class after we have added it to the class path in the Maven pom. Now let's run the patch. Here you can see the output of the performance monitor. Guess this should be enough. And now we switch to the dbver db client. And take a look at the tables. Here are the items that are monitored in detail. You can see again the name of the class being employee. And there are some views for more detailed analysis. For example, how many items were monitored over time of a particular type, like reader or processor. Based on another example recording, uh, here you can also see how the H2 monitoring output can be further analyzed. Here, it was done in Microsoft Excel using a pivot table. But of course, you can also use other types of analysis, including some of the tools that we are going to talk about in the upcoming videos like Grafana or Graphene.